Hey, Luke, how are you doing? Good, James. I, I like the sh I like your shirt. Oh, thanks. Hey, um, you really haven't had that much time to look at these guys, but is there anything just right away that stands out to you? Is there anyone missing? Is there anyone that looks incredible? What's sort of your first glance? Yeah, um, it's it, it was really exciting to get back on the court today and act, and play like group basketball. Um, you know, normally you have the month of September where guys are playing five on five and you kind of start to, you know, see it and get a feel for guys and they get into shape. So, uh, you know, one thing I, I noticed is we have to uh, we got to be in much better shape, which is to be expected. Um, you know, we had some really nice moments. The energy was great. Uh, the buy in was great. Uh, a lot of the things we look to put in. Um, I was very pleased with, um, and then there was a lot of sloppy play too for day one was when we got to the scrimmaging and put an emphasis on, on, you know, our spacing and our speed and, and getting the ball in and out every time, uh, got a little sloppy, but to be expected, um, and, and different players had different nice moments throughout. So, um, overall pleased with the first day. You've got a lot of players. How are you going to manage all of these, these mouths that you got to feed? Yeah, well, it's it's. Well, I think well, you know one of the things we talked about was you know the the you know how chaotic this season will be, and it's uh, for one reason or another that we're going to need everybody this year. So uh, you know it's one of those things that we we you know we we create an all in environment, and then we know like you guys are going to have to step up and and be ready to make plays. It happened to us last year. Uh, just with injuries, uh, you know, and, and different, um, you know, now with where, where the world is at now and what we're going through, you got you got a lot of different things to manage through. So uh, part of training camp, James, is to, to see and to figure out who's looking the best, who's looking the sharpest uh, and put together that or original rotation. Uh, and then from there, if you're not in that original rotation, is knowing to stay sharp because, uh, we're gonna need we're gonna need you at some point through the season. Sean Cunningham. Hey, what's up, Luke? Sean. Um, did you have a full complement, full roster? Your full full roster in the arena today practicing? No, we did not. Um, you know, we had when we when we came back from before we got back in the facility and we did the you know, we're going through the, the NBA protocol as far as, the, you know, the safety stuff is concerned. Uh, we had a couple positive tests. So, um, you know, before we opened up, those guys were, uh, you know, put in quarantine. We have some guys that uh, because we haven't played yet. Uh, and there was been no five on five contact. Some guys, from physical reasons, we held out just because we wanted. Uh, we didn't feel safe yet with with the injury risk part of it. Um, but we had enough guys in there to get three teams and do some good, fun up and down scrimmaging. Um, so we didn't have a full group, but we had enough to play ball. Right on. And then, you know, as you kind of get to that point where hopefully you will have that full complement of players, whether it's soon or or you know down the road. These first few days, I think, what did, what do you identify as the biggest priorities for your team? Well, <clears throat> from a mind on mindset, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, being able to being ready to adapt to anything and in doing that with the with the the attacking mindset of like, look, we're going to control what we can. And then uh, going out as a group and, and being able to uh to really put out our best effort, no matter what's going on or who's in and who's out. Um, as far as on the court, um, you know, we're putting in, uh, again, some of the, 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 the secondary offense and uh, putting a huge emphasis on getting the ball out as quickly as possible and getting up that court as quickly as possible uh, from an offensive end. And then we have Rex with some uh, defensive of concepts that we, we feel are going to be good for our group this year that we we spent some some uh, time focused on today. Marshall Harris. Hey, Luke, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen the news about uh, the Portland Trailblazers having to shut down their uh, facility because of uh, the COVID-19 thing. Uh, are there any like contingencies in terms of that's the team you're supposed to play less than a week from now? Um, what's your understanding of how that goes if if they can't play for some reason? 
Yeah, I mean, that, that just, uh, again, goes back into the theme that uh, we shared and talked about as a, a team before practice today, um, which was kind of, you know, acknowledge, uh, accept, and a, a attack. And uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that it's going to be a crazy season. And I didn't find out about the Portland thing until I was walking here uh, to do media from practice. And uh, if that's the case and those games get canceled, we have to be ready to adapt. And we can't sit around and pout about it and complain about it. You know, it's got to be changed the mindset, control what we can control and attack it. So uh, if that is the case, hey, too bad that we don't get some some games, but that, that means we got four extra days of practice with no travel. So, you know, we're going to look at it from that that side. Um, but that's part of what the preseason is about, too, is, is getting a feel for how this will work when the when the regular season starts. So as of now, I don't know what that what that answer is, but I know we'll be ready uh, and prepared uh, to go down either path. If, if you guys do play Portland, what, what's your reasonable expectation? You just talked about your guys, you know, not obviously being in basketball shape just yet. What's your reasonable expectation between today and Friday of what you can do in terms of progress and and just being ready to do something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to use these games. Uh, we're going to – just like we are in, in in the practices as far as, like, we understand where we're at right now. Um, and even though these games are coming up and they're right around the corner and we're com we want uh, to compete and try to win um, – it's also about not skipping any any steps and and building the habits with our group that we know are going to lead us to to winning down down the road. So, um, you know, we're going to look to to continue to to work on those things that we're emphasizing right now into the games, even if that means we have more turnovers or we look sloppy at times. Um, you know, we probably won't play anyone thirty something thirty plus minutes, but we'll work with our sports science team see. How, how much we can play our, you know, some of our top guys and we'll play them that much to, uh, to kind of help continue to push us to get into game shape. Jason Jones. Hey, Luke, how you doing? Can't hear you too much, Jason. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. I got you. Hey, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Jason. Okay, you kind of touched on, I was going to ask about Marvin. You talked about easing guys back in just – with the way this whole thing is set up right now, how do you plan out how you're going to, what guys you're going to ease in and what do you um, kind of set that plan up knowing that you may or may not get preseason games, depending on how things go? Yeah. You know, that's where you gotta, you know, you gotta work closely with, uh, with your sports science team. And we, we, we got a great, great group here that's done a lot of research, um, you know, because my, my answer as a coach is I want everyone to play all the time. Uh, but I work with them as far as, you know, wh when they feel, you know, they, they measure their loads every day when they're in the weight room, when they're on the court doing one on one stuff. They do. We did conditioning tests with everybody uh, day one uh, when the gym opened up again. So we kind of have a solid baseline of where people are at. Um, and then depending into by individual, uh, I meet with the sports science team and they kind of give me their um their thoughts on where we are as far as who can go full contact, uh, who needs some more time and, and whatnot. And you talked about, you know, the emphasis on getting the ball out quickly, playing uh, with a faster pace. Outside of last season, pretty much all the teams you've been around and coached in the last, what, maybe eight, ten years have been teams that have played fast. Is getting back to this also a comfort thing for you just because it's what you pretty much have done? Yeah, it is, Jason. And uh, yeah, I've the teams I've coached, whether head coach or assistant coach, we've always played fast. The teams I played on for, you know, we weren't uh, I, I grew up believing that to be a, uh, a big part of how the game should be played. You know, it's fun for players. It's fun for fans. You get up and down. Um, so, yeah, you know, part of that is is, is getting back in, into, uh, you know, the values that I believe in as a coach. Um, and, you know, and, and putting much more of an emphasis on it this year, uh, you know, last year, again, it was, it was, you know, we, we had a, a that, that we had a lot go on last year, but it, it is something as far as how I believe the game should be played. Matt George. Hi, Luke, you shared with us, uh, when we first spoke with you that 
in normal circumstances with this, these many young players, it would be a process for you well into the season to get to where you want to be now with COVID-19 added on top of that. It, it should take even longer. Uh, in your mind or, or by your staff standards, at what point would you like to see things really start to click with this team? Are we talking mid-season, end of the season, early on in the season? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see it click from from day one. I think uh, you know we're gonna be we're gonna continue to be positive and and continue to build towards that. Um, th there's never a, a right uh, correct answer for that. Um, it, it just with different teams, it's it, it is different amounts of time. And as long as the team's continuing to get better and you're seeing that progress, you know it's gonna happen. Uh, you know, looking back at at um, last season again, I think if it finally clicked for us as you know we got to to the All Star break and coming out of All Star break, um, where we we're we we're just you know we we're playing at a, a very consistent solid level. Um, that you know there's some teams that have been together for a long time that they kind of ease their way into it and then they find it. And there's other teams every year. Phoenix, for example, came out of the gates last year hot, ready to go. Um, and and uh, you know we're looking for that to to be us. Um, but as long as the progress and the work is happening, uh, then, you know, we're happy with our guys. I'll kind of rephrase it a little bit. At what point, I guess, are you expecting it to really click or, or at what point would you be concerned if it's not where you expect it to be? Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's not, again, it's, there's not like a, a certain date. It's like, oh, by now, if it doesn't happen, we're, we're in big trouble. Um, you know, we, we don't, we don't think in those terms, we think in the terms of, of what do we need to do today to get better? And then as long as we keep doing that, we're going to be fine. And, and, you know, then we have ultimate goals and bigger goals down, uh, down the line, but it, it's, if you stay focused on what's important and what you're trying to get done, uh, each and every day, uh, you, you let the, you let the other stuff play out as it comes. A couple more here, Tony Harvey. Hey, Coach. Um, Glenn Robinson, he said he came in trying to get as much intel, much information that he can from other uh, people, part of the uh, Kings, infra, uh, Kings organization. Worked out with De'Aaron and Buddy, Southern California in the offseason. What, what, what's your uh, read on, on Glenn Robinson? He's been in the league for about seven years. He's a 26-year-old veteran, but he he has a lot of upside for someone who's been around two or three teams. Who I'm sorry, uh, I missed the the player you're talking about. Glenn, Glenn Rob. Glenn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Glenn, yeah, Glenn, uh, Glenn's great. He was a he was a he was a um, a solid pickup for us that late in. I was you know surprised to still see him out there. Um, played for Golden State a little bit. Talked to Steve Kerr about him. And got some really, really good feedback. Um, but yeah, we're we're very excited that uh, we got the opportunity uh, to have him with us and, and get a look and, and see what see what he can do and see if he could help us win. And though he can uh, do a lot of things, how do you see him working in the strategy of uh, of defense? Because he seemed like he's you know he loved to play on that end of the ball too. From you know games I've seen him you know play at Golden State yeah yeah he's he, he's got he's got good size on him, good length um a lot of the film we watched on him once we signed him uh he was you know he he was it, it appeared to be he was matched up with the other team's uh premier wing scorer um so yeah we're, the, we're looking at what he can do defensively just as much as what we're looking at uh as far as his abilities offensively Jason Anderson Hey, Lou, good to see you today. Um, can you give us just a, a little bit of the, a rundown on the guys uh, who missed uh, practice today due to injury and just who's out and, and why? Yeah, I could. I'm not going to, Jason, just because some of it has to do with with COVID and and I don't, you know, there's again, there's so many rules right now that I'm still learning all of them, and I don't want to, I don't want to get my uh, my foot stuck in my mouth, so I'm. I'm just going to stay away from who missed for what reasons and, and everything else. Um, but, uh, you know, we we're looking forward to getting uh, getting guys back as they either, uh, you know, get healthy or 
graduate through all the protocols that are out there. Okay. Um, following up on a point that I think you were alluding to a little bit earlier um, about running and pace and um, last season, did you feel like you guys were not in the kind of shape you needed to be at the start of the season? And, and, you know, I know that was a complicated preseason schedule for you. And, and do you learn from that? And is there any way to make sure you are in the right shape given the circumstances with this preseason? Yeah, you, you definitely you learn from the different experiences and, uh, you know, coming in with the new coaching staff last year and going to India and uh, having, you know, the the such a high injury risk on the on the players uh, that had to do that much traveling. You know, we we put the priority on on getting uh, the new terminology and the in the in the foundation of, of you know, the, the teaching aspects of the game. Uh, and then we had a game like a couple of days later. So to answer that question, no, we were not in the in the type of shape we needed to be in uh, to start an NBA season. Um, and now we have our own, you know, different challenges this year. Um, but with that being said, we do have part of our foundation set now because we've been here for a year. So we can quickly go through some of that stuff uh, and then we can put more of that time and emphasis on. Uh, getting ourselves in shape and, and uh, some more uh, of those type of details. Uh, last one, G-Man. Uh, Luke, a year ago, there was a lot of talk when training camp started about every session would begin with defensive talk, defensive drills, et cetera. Is that still the case this year? Because I hear a lot of talk about pace and tempo, et cetera. Oh yeah, no, we, we, uh, we first drilled for G man. Good to hear your voice. I don't see you, but, uh, I'm incognito you. today. <laughs> uh, we, we, we started practice again with defense today. Uh, and De'Aaron was very quick to point that out when he did, uh, he's De'Aaron's, uh, he's on top of everything. But, uh, to answer that question, yeah, we started with defense again today. Uh, and, and we got, got what we wanted to get through um, and then kind of went into offense from there. And as the practice went built up into the scrimmages and everything else. I know you're just getting started in terms of, of, of everything, offense and defense. Uh, last year, you frequently mentioned that you were targeting as a round number 35 three point attempts per game. Uh, any thought about that this year? Will that number change? Yeah. Well, so the, the, the funny thing, the interesting thing is, 35 a game the prior year would have put us in the top five and we hit 35 point something last year and I think we finished 13th or 14th so that number is continuing to to go up um we we don't have a set number um but we do have a we do have a very um firm understanding of, of the type of threes that we're trying to get this year and uh you know we've shared that with our guys we've changed the scoring system when we scrimmage to to value um the type of threes we want as more points than just three um, so we're looking to really um you know to really continue to improve on what we believe is to be a good 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 shot selection for our group Thank you, Coach.